1973, I graduated from nurses training in Mattoon, Illinois, and I came to work for the doctors starting in 1976. So I got to learn a lot about the doctors that live in Shelbyville and have worked around here for a long time. I worked for Dr. Saroy, who was here, and I worked for him for 22 years. He was originally from the Philippines. Really, medicine was his life. He did like to do dancing. He was very good at dancing, and he was very active in the Filipino American Association. The Dowses, Dr. Urbano, and he's uh, familiarly named uh, Dr. Ban, um, he was a surgeon and a general practitioner. He worked here since the uh, around 77 or maybe 78. He still works here. I remember one time where he uh, was working upstairs and he and Dr. Saroy were very good friends because they were both from the Philippines. And they walked around a corner and they collided. So whenever they collided, it hurt Dr. Ban to the point that he had to have stitches in his head. So Dr. Saroy stitched him up. <laughs> Dr. Cowder, he was one of our older doctors that worked in the medical center and he was actually from Austria. He worked clear up until he was in like his 80s. And then uh, the story goes that he would uh, see a patient, take a nap, go ahead and see another patient, take a nap. And then, uh, you know, that was the way he kind of ended his days through that time. Uh, Dr. Daska Rujal, he was from India and he was one of the first doctors that we hired to come to the Shelby County Medical Center. He and his wife, Kamari, came here. Kamari would come to work at Dr. Doss's office, and being Indian, she would wear her saris and uh, have the little red dot on her forehead. Sweetest lady, I tell you, she just really, uh, you know, could make you happy just being around her. Dr. Ted Little, Theodore Little, he was kind of a colorful uh, character. He was uh, born around Shelbyville, his father was a fiddle maker, and uh, because his father was a fiddle maker, he learned how to play the fiddle. Dr. Dutta, R.K. Dutta, was from England, and he came here in the early 1970s, and he was one of our first specialized OBGYNs that came here. He did general medicine, but he also delivered a lot of babies. And then um, I kind of wanted to talk about Dr. Hulick, Dr. Hulick, Charles Hulick, uh, his family uh, have done so much for Shelbyville. Dr. Hulick um, was an old time doctor that actually brought in a lot of other physicians to the area. Dr. Hulick did a lot of community things. He was actually on one of the um, boards that met to get the lake started here in Shelbyville. Dr. Petrie was born in West Virginia, and one of the stories that I know about Dr. Petrie is that he would go fishing out near his home, and whenever he got called in to do the hospital work or an emergency room call, uh, they had a big bell out by where he fished, and they would ring this big bell, and then he would come in, and he would go into the hospital and do whatever he needed to do there. And another thing with all of the doctors like uh, Biddlecombe and Petri and uh, Dr. Larson, um, they went on a lot of office calls in the patient's homes. They would do house calls. And whenever they did that, I mean, uh, they would bring their little black bag. I remember Dr. Larson coming to my house whenever I was a kid and uh, he gave me a penicillin shot. But he was just a, a, a nice guy. I always trusted him, even as a kid. The doctors were friends, um, especially the doctors that worked at the Shelby County Medical Center. All of those doctors, we all felt like family there. Jack was born in 1922 and died in 2006. And he had 10 siblings. So I believe he grew, grew up as a very poor boy, helping the family, because he stayed with his mother 
throughout his whole life and helped take care of her. He used to sketch in class at school and some of the teachers would get upset with him, but then others would say, go ahead and do your sketching and drawing because they knew there was a talent there. He uh, used to do lettering on trucks when that was, I think, a law and they had to put the weight limit of the truck on there. And he also did a lot of uh, painting on stores, windows, and when the um, truck lettering didn't need to be done, he lost a lot of work and so he kind of reverted to doing a lot of portraits and landscaping. So he would drive out in the country and take a picture of a barn and then he would go home and draw it. People would contact him and hire him to do portraits and he did quite a bit of that and uh, he was very good at it. When he needed money, he would uh, paint a picture of a barn or a landscape or whatever, and then he would take it to the people that he knew that would pay him, and that's how he was making his living there at the last. And he'd always go to friends that he knew that would pay him. He did oil paintings and pastels. If you had a portrait, that you wanted a picture that you wanted him to paint. He would take that picture and then put it into a painting for you. He did a painting for me of the old dugout school that I had a picture of and it turned out really good. He came, brought me a picture that he had done and he failed to sign his name. And I said, Jack, you have to put your name on these portraits. And he didn't think that he needed to, that maybe they weren't that good. And so then each one that he brought to me after that, he had his name signed on him. He was visiting in my home um, one time and uh, he kept looking at this big picture of an Indian on the wall that he had painted years ago. And he just kept looking at it and looking at it and finally just out of the blue he says, that face looks like my mother. So I'm thinking he put his mother's face in this picture and then made it into an Indian chief. He also told me that being a good artist was not something you were taught, it was just in you. Grew up in Shelbyville, so uh, I'm very familiar with the churches here in town and have been all my life. As I said, grew up here, grew up at First Christian Church where I now serve as pastor. First church that uh, was active uh, in, in Shelbyville was the Methodist Church. About 1825, uh, circuit riders came through this area for the Methodist Church. Uh, the first Methodist Church uh, that was here in town uh, was uh, on the corner of uh, North Third and Morgan. Uh, not only uh, were circuit riders so important to the founding of the Methodist Church in this area. But it was the women of the church uh, who really made those churches grow. It was the women of the church who uh, welcomed the circuit riders into their homes and fed them and, you know, took care of things while they were here. And if you go to the Methodist Church today and look at the stained glass windows, you'll see uh, at least one of those women's uh, name on one of those stained glass windows. The minister who uh, was the, uh, the pastor of the first Baptist church to be here in Shelbyville was a man by the name of Bushrod Washington Henry. He was the, uh, the Baptist minister for about four years uh, when he determined that there were certain theological things that bothered him about the Baptists. And so therefore, uh, he and a group of uh, other believers founded uh, what ultimately became First Christian Church here in Shelbyville. The era in which he was uh, a minister here in Shelbyville, many of the uh, ministers would have had the similar situations that he did in that uh, many times there was very low pay for ministers. Uh, and the first year that he was uh, actually the Shelby County Evangelist, he received enough salary for a pair of trousers one pair of homemade woolen socks and a dollar and a quarter in cash. Another interesting fact about Bushrod Henry 
is that uh, his great-granddaughter, a woman by the name of Beulah Nett, uh, was a kindergarten teacher here in Shelbyville for many, many years. And she was active in our church until her death in 1990. Uh, Presbyterian Church uh, started uh, out in the country outside of Shelbyville in an area called Prairie Bird. And that church uh, is, sits on um, uh, the corner of Chestnut and North First and uh, is a very historical church, lovely uh, church building and has been there a long, long time. During that same time period and just a little after, actually a little after the Civil War, uh, the, the, there was a Catholic presence in Shelbyville and the first uh, Catholic church was built. It's now Best Wedding Chapel. But that was the Catholic Church for many years, and uh, there was a, a school there, a parochial school as well. The first Lutheran Church in Shelbyville was St. Paul's Lutheran Church, uh, and uh, it is on uh, South Pine and, and South Third Street on the corner. Uh, again, that was the first of the Lutheran churches in the community, much later than uh, Holy Cross Lutheran Church became part of the Shelbyville community. One of the great things about churches in Shelbyville, uh, we have a very cohesive group of churches that, that works together very well. Uh, through our ministerial association, uh, we sponsor uh, a, a Holy Week service for Good Friday, a Thanksgiving service, and we also are there to assist people in the community when there are needs, people passing through the community uh, that need help. There's a real spirit of cooperation here in Shelbyville. I think that the health of a church, the church, and when I say the church, I mean the church is combined in a community, is a great barometer of the community. I think it says a lot about Shelbyville that we have as many healthy churches as we do, and the working relationship that the churches have with one another, I think is a very healthy thing and speaks well of Shelbyville. best people in the studio tonight. Thank you, all of you, for coming yeah. out tonight. We knew that you'd have fun if you just listened to what we had to tell. You'd come and have a good time <laughs> between the pizza and the snacks and the company that mm -hmm. we've had tonight. It's great been a blast. time. We hope you have enjoyed Shelbyville. This is our story as much as we have. We know some people have because we got some shout outs yes, to give. We got some shout outs. You want to go first? So I'm going to give a shout out to Lila and Robert Bollinger. They're calling from Florida tonight, Woo! and they want to say hi to everyone in the studio. I right. think they are relatives of Noel, who told this Stay Right story. That is his parents. Is that right? They're yeah, his parents. Yeah, his parents. So, so thank you for watching. That's awesome. That's why we stream. Yeah, that's why we stream. So if right now, we first of all, call. If you have been watching all evening and you have not phoned, now is the time, yep, okay? Now is the time. We want you to call. We want to, we'd want. like to get up to 50 callers, and we're up to 30 Five, so we're 15 yeah. away. We can Wouldn't do it. Great? We can still do it. Yeah, okay. do okay. it. An elder Yaki called. Okay. Whoever that may be. Elder. He's no, he's an elder, like elderly. Okay. Okay, he's old. Okay. Whoa. Oh, not too old. Whoa. But he is elderly. Well, and so okay. He said that he has lived in Shelbyville, in Shelbyville since 1962, and he is enjoying the program and he has learned a lot tonight. So he didn't All want right. me to mention his name. So. We just called him Elder Young. Hey, you know who else is learning a lot tonight, okay. too? Okay, Brother Daryl took this call just a few minutes ago, and Abby Mars called in from Shelbyville. And give us some hooting and hollers out there in that house because we got a lot of little Cub Scouts watching tonight. Oh, yeah. And they're having a viewing party, There's and they're Brother learning Darryl. about their city, and they're learning about local history. So you keep learning, and you keep scouting. Yes. Good job. Absolutely. We want to give a thank you to Liz Schaefer and Roger Stump. Roger's calling from Oriana. Oriana? Oriana. Yeah, Oriana. And Bruce Berry is from Shelbyville. He was the 35th caller. So All who's right. going to be the next one? Who's Let's 36? get on the line. And um, did you already get yeah. that? Okay, you Lila. already got her. Okay. Okay, so I've got some more thank yous. We've got Rob Schuff from Shelbyville. Okay. Thank you so much. Sue Frazier. I'm wondering if that's a relative of Mike Frazier. I'm I guessing probably. Thank you so much. And then we also have um, Lydia Lewis called in. And her husband, William Lewis, did the excavating for Lake Shelbyville wow. in the mines. Wow. How cool. 
That's awesome. Well, see, that's what makes it cool about this program. You're out there watching, and you're even telling us more fun things about Shelby, Shelbyville. So, so what we want to do yeah. is hear your comments Come about on. Shelbyville. Give us a call. Say you want a copy of a DVD. Two or more is $60. One is $75. We want to hit a goal of 50 calls tonight, we're and we're way. at 35, 36 oh. calls right now. Probably so get those phones ringing. Come on, give us a call. Let's get every Ring phone those busy. bells, people. Come Ring on. those bells. Come on. We have some success in the studio tonight. We need you to call. We always make our goal. We have we, always made our goal, and Shelbyville's going to do it tonight. You've well, got it in you. It's, it's you're, you're watching. You know that you enjoy the program. Call tonight. We want you to call. If you call, it's $75 for one DVD. That's a gift to WEIU. But you know what? A lot of people are saying, forget the $75. I want to give the 120 and get two. One for myself and one to give away. We're deal. going into the Thanksgiving mm -hmm. uh, season and that's a reason to give back. Yes. You're giving a gift to WEIU. The storytellers gave their gift mm -hmm. of doing the storyteller. We made the program and now we're offering it to you. So give us Yay, a call. Yay, there's another call right there. We've got people in the studio with us. We have them over there on the other side of the mm -hmm. set. They're in a living room. We've got people behind the scenes and production <laughs> control room. Hi, John. People are laughing. And we've got people just smiling uh -huh. and excited mm -hmm. and they just can't believe the energy in the house no, tonight. Right, there right they are right there. Hi, Bob. Hi, Lisa. Hey. Hi, Bob's wife. Now, uh, Mary Catherine, I know her as Kat, but a lot of, she's here tonight. She's on, she's on the phone right now. She is our student worker here mm -hmm. at WEIU, and she came in as a student worker, and I'm going to tell you what, I bet you the people in Shelbyville, you've got a great young woman there, and she's got two Yay, sisters. Kat. She yes. is a triplet, and I know most of the people in Shelbyville will know Mary Catherine, mm -hmm. but we call her Kat. Yep. Her sister is here tonight, Liz, and we want to thank her for being mm -hmm. here, and she brought a yep, friend with her, too. Friend. They've been so a big help tonight. We, it was Claire, and Claire has even helped out. What? How wonderful it is for Shelbyville teenagers to come mm -hmm. and say, I want to volunteer my time. That says a lot about the people in Shelbyville. Yeah, how important this is to them and sharing their community with the world tonight. All over the world, people <laughs> have been calling call. in. Kevin, Kevin's Kevin. a little, uh, yeah. you, need a, you need a phone call right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we need a phone call. Anyone know Kevin? Anyone enjoy the Balloon Fest? Give Kevin a call and tell him thank you for sharing yes. that story. You know what? I do have to give uh, Kevin a kudos because I was able to go behind the scenes uh, and go to the Balloon Fest this year. And it is amazing how much work goes on behind yeah. the scenes. And so many people said, it's all Kevin. He was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> and you know what? It was wonderful. So it was great to be a part yeah. of that. But he you know what? You know what he would say? What? It's all about the volunteers. Oh, yes, he would. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what he would say because he wanted to make yep. sure when he told that story to thank all the yes. volunteers. Well, it takes a lot of volunteers, but it takes somebody to come up with yeah. the idea, too. So thank you. Yeah. What a, a, a great event for um, Shelbyville to have every year. Yeah, so absolutely. Well, you know what? We've got some more storytellers up here mm -hmm. on, on stage with mm -hmm. us. We've got Monica over here. If you've ever been to the library, <laughs> call, call Monica and say thank Aww. you so much. There's lots of good things going on at the library. I want a copy Freddy. of that DVD. We've got Freddie Fry mm -hmm. here who is involved with tourism, the visitors, all the different things going on in Shelbyville, the Balloon Fest. Mm -hmm. Tell Kevin thank you. If you are faith-based, <laughs> we've got Mark back here. John is all about local history. If you're looking to get married or you're just in love tonight, <laughs> you give Brother Daryl a call right now. Oh, my gosh. And um, what else was I going to say? You threw me off. <laughs> threw uh, you off. Oh, we got I lots of love. I want to give Freddie Fry a little bit of a head because she has done a lot for us. She yeah, brought props good job. tonight for our studio. Anything yes, we thank needed, you for your help. Freddie stepped up, so we yeah. really want to give her a gigantic. There are so many people that have supported this program, mm -hmm. so many underwriters. The phones are quiet right now. Yep. Is there I'm not anyone? sure what number we're at. Amy, what number are we at over there? She, 38. 38. Could we okay, come on, 40? let's do 40. Two more calls. Two more calls. <laughs> two more calls. <laughs> two more calls. <laughs> yeah. Got, there we you go. Got two, or what are you at? Two. two. Well, we made 40. We made 40. Yeah, yeah. good job. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Okay. Way to go. Okay, so if you're out okay. there right now and you say, you know what, I want them to get to 50, give us a call. So yeah, give us right a call. Now, let's just see if someone will call. Just for the heck of it. All right, and Come while on, we're call. waiting on people to call, we're going to get all yeah, of our storytellers, all of our friends, all of our family from yeah. Shelbyville up here with here. us. I'm going to get my papers out of the way so I don't Everybody trip anybody. Come up. We'd love because this is the be time of night where we thank all of our new friends, yes. all of our family members from Shelbyville, and we want everybody to be seen because these are the folks yeah. who represented your town yeah. right here, right on, now. Norma. Show the love, Brother Daryl. <laughs> Show the love. Everybody come on Everybody in. Everybody come on, Norma. 
Yeah. We've got some people coming in from the other side of the <laughs> stage over here. Right people That's behind purple? the scenes, you come, come on, on in, in and Freddy. join us too. Everybody, Shelbyville, let's, in. let's get in together. Oh, come on up here, we Kevin. got Norma's husband. He's coming on come over. On up. Got some purple on too. Sharing the love in the studio right here. Now, we, we could not have done yeah. this program Let's without everybody, everybody in this picture to the, right now. These are storytellers. Get a good shot, Ramin. This friends. is all of our new friends and friends. family And these Shelbyville. will be friends for ours yep. forever. 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 And we want to thank yes. you for supporting all of our new friends and family tonight for Shelbyville. This is our story. Everybody wave. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your support. Shelbyville, This Is Our Story is underwritten in part by SSI is proud to bring you Shelbyville. This is our story on WEIU. SSI is a developer of agribusiness software located in Shelbyville and supports the storytellers and everyone involved in the show. More information regarding software solutions integrated is available at agvance.net. Sarah Bush Lincoln Shelbyville Clinic provides family practice, laboratory, and diagnostic imaging services in Shelbyville. Sarah Bush Lincoln Shelbyville, trusted, compassionate care, and proud to be a partner of Shelbyville. This is our story. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Central Illinois, providing services for East Central Illinois for over 100 years, hopes you enjoy Shelbyville. This is our story. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Central Illinois, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Shelby Electric Cooperative is a member-owned electric distribution cooperative serving all or parts of nine counties and an honored partner of Shelbyville. This is our story on WEIU. Shelby Electric Cooperative coordinates with community and civic groups in fostering programs that contribute to Shelbyville's development. Monocle's Pizza in Shelbyville thanks all of the storytellers and champions for making Shelbyville This Is Our Story happen on WEIU. Enjoy the show from your friends and Shelbyville neighbors. Monocle's Pizza, located at 1900 West Main Street.